services can be done absolutely costlessly by putting in your app in your mobile phone. Now, by pushing these many of these young people from the universities, research institutions coming up with mobile phone apps, you want to check your eyes, they put a kind of attachment with your mobile phone, and you look at your screen, the quickly CCCC does your scan or your scanning of the, your eyesight. It didn't cost you anything. You didn't go to a doctor. You can record it as many times as you want so that you can see the progressions of deterioration, whatever you want, because it's free. You can take your blood test. You can make your uh, pulse temperatures. These are already done. This is not something. But many more complicated things. Somebody, some young man brought me another, because they know that I'm fond of this idea. So he said, hold this mobile phone. I said, okay, I'm holding it. So can you see something in the screen? I said, yes, I see some graphs going on here. He said, no, it's not, it's not graphs or business or anything. This is your echocardiogram. So I don't have to go to clinic, put on all those things, sit down, lie down, and all this, and somebody gives a printout. Nothing. You get your own thing, save it someplace, save it in the cloud anytime you want. So you monitor your health, monitor your heart as many times as you want. And then we can have a software looking at your heart bits, your heart bit, echocardiogram. I didn't try to identify if there is anything abnormal showing up anytime, which is not normal with you, not normal with other people, not normal with you. That means something is happening in your body. All you need is software to check it. You don't need a doctor to do it. So it's all possible. So for all practical purposes, diagnostic services can be done at your home costlessly. But would a moneymaker company of technology bring out this? No, because he doesn't make any money. He, even somebody does it, he will buy it up and keep it in his pocket so that it doesn't go out. Because he will disrupt all his businesses that is going on, checking you. So there's a conflict of money making and solving problems. So this is the, the direction that we need to do. So I put all this together and kind of put it in a package. I said, the way I'm looking forward to, this is the direction. I need a direction. Everybody needs a direction. And particularly in the education system, I say, education is a wonderful system the way they do it. They teach you math, they teach you physics, they teach you chem chemistry, everything, history, anything. But they never talk to you about who you are. Why are you learning all these things? They never touch that subject. What are you going to do with this? Except getting a job after the certificate. That is understood. But what is it as a human being that relevance to you and your education? I said one of the subjects that every class should be teaching so that the kids can talk to each other, what am I? What am I going to be? What is the purpose of my life? Just a heck of it, just discussion. You may believe in it, you may not believe in it. See, what is the purpose? What should I look back to my life when I'm about to take leave of this planet and say I had a good life? What are the elements in that life that will make me happy and have a good conclusion? No, you don't want to talk about that. I said, have you ever asked them what kind of world you would like to create? if you are the creator of the world. You are the creator of the world. We are the creator of the world. God doesn't come and create himself. He, if he does, he does it through us. So what is it that we want to create? I said we'll have every year students to work out what kind of world that we would like to have, even if I'm not here, like to have. That's a good exercise. Then at the end of it, I'll write it down and share with everybody else and debate about it. He did something, he did something, so we agree with an agreed formula. This is the kind of world we'd like to see. And put it in your wall. Every year you go back, check, redesign, and put it there. I said, if you go through it, if you write down what kind of world you want, I guarantee you that world will be created. If you don't do that, the chances are it, those things will never happen. 
because nobody had it in mind because we just drifted along in the world we didn't have a destination we didn't have a direction to do so to me i put a direction put a kind of a destination to guide me i hope others and that destination comes in three zeros so i look for three zeros zero number 1 zero po poverty in the world nobody should be poor, poor in this whole world this is absolutely unnecessary this poverty is not in the person is in the system system created the poverty people didn't create poverty poverty is the denial of all human rights denial of all of opportunities that's what the poverty is all about so if you create a system where you give everybody will be given all the opportunities nobody will be poor person there's nothing wrong with that he or she is as creative as anybody else i give the example of bonsai i said you take the seed of the tallest tree and put it in a flower pot and it goes this big and cute little tree like exactly like the old other one and you want to blame the seed what did you do the seed is good seed there's no problem the problem was the container in which we grew it's because we didn't give enough soil to grow I said poor people are bonsai people there is nothing wrong with their seed their seed is as good as anybody else's seed simply society never gave them the space to grow as tall as anybody else that's it <laughs> so we put zero poverty and i keep kind of make it hit the point i said we should put the date and achieve that and then create poverty museum because there is no poverty we can't see what poverty is our kids in the school will be asking what is poverty you always talk about so we'll take them to the museum to show what poverty used to be like and then let them promise that they will never allow them to come back again it will never happen in human history again it's the end of this whole thing so that's a zero power and it's doable millennium development goal sets zero not zero the reduction of poverty by half by 2015 this is 2015 and we feel very happy in bangladesh because we reduced we achieved that millennium development goal number 1 in 2013 in june so we already crossed that line we have crossed that halfway mark so now we are calculating when it will take us to come to zero in a very generous calculation it will be 2030 by 2030 we can bring it to zero because according to the speed at which it is reducing it's possible many countries i'm sure india will do that too so they will come to the halfway mark and the, if you bring something to half by the same forces by same logic same process it will come to zero this is no big deal but you have to set the motion in place so the motion has to be in place to make it happen so zero poverty in the whole world and we set the date 2050 by that time we should clean up every place so that there's no trace of poverty anywhere in the planet second zero is zero unemployment as i said is an artificial concept artificially driven into our heads it was something made into our heads not belonging to our being there's nothing wrong with us so we can bring that unemployment will become a kind of historical word which will remain unemployed that word cannot be used because there is nobody unemployed so they become unemployed the third zero is zero net carbon emission because this planet just cannot go with this situation that we have the carbonized economy that we have so we have to find a way and that's where the research and more than research and our life lifestyle has to change we cannot keep the polluting carbonizing life habit and create a decarbonized life a uh, world it cannot be done but we have to do it so we are saying the civilization that we have created today is a mark for extinction it cannot sustain it cannot be sustainable for the reasons that i'm explaining it has to find a new framework so that it can sustain itself environmentally it's not sustainable today it's not sustainable so we have to change that so that we can zero net carbon emission that's a mark that we have crossed the civilization of the old style 
new civilization post begins and poverty because concentration of wealth continues in that system you cannot stop it no matter how much you try how much you ask your government to do that government has no power to do that because it's built into the system wealth is like a magnet the more wealth you have more magnetic power you have to create reach out to more wealth. So it will continue to accumulate. And the ground will become empty. The billions of people on the ground, few people on the top, holding all the wealth of the world. Even today, right now, if you can just look at it a very generous way, 1%, top 1% of the people owns 99% of the wealth of the whole world. So what kind of world is this? And you can count them by numbers that these are the people who own all the wealth of the world. And this will become worse because it's getting wider. So this is unsustainable. And unemployment, no reason why they should. Your being a prosperous economy doesn't guarantee you full employment because it is a wrong thing. So we have to bring back the human energy, human creative power to design their own life, own way of doing it and so on. So these are the three zeros that I think, if we can focus on, we can create the new civilization, which will start with three zeros. Thank you very much. St standing ovation, please. <laughs> standing ovation, please. Kindly take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, you would all agree if I say that it has been an intellectual feast for all of us today. Being a very distinguished orator, Professor Yunus took us on a journey which made us introspect to find solutions to the problems of the third world in particular. It's time to register our gratitude to this great professor by honoring him. I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor K. S. Rangappa, to honor the Nobel Laureate. In the meantime, I request the Chairman of the Kaveri Gramina Bank to get ready. I request uh, Sri D. Somashekar Shastri, Chairman of the Kaveri Gramina Bank, to honor the Nobel Laureate.
We are coming to the end of the program. In view of the Bund tomorrow, the inauguration of uh, India chapter of Social Business Academic Network scheduled for tomorrow is advanced to today, 6.30 p.m. at Mahajanas College. Professor Yunis, Muhammad Yunus will inaugurate the Social Business Academic Network, SBAN, sharply at 6.30. Professor C. Basuraju, our beloved registrar, is basically a professor of law. His deep knowledge of Dr. Ambedkar's philosophy has provided him with clarity of vision and clarity of purpose. Working in tandem with our dynamic vice chancellor, Professor Basuraju has given the administration the required balance and poise. Now I request the beloved registrar to propose a vote of thanks. Good evening to everyone. It is my pleasure and privilege to extend my vote of thanks to all the dignitaries who have become the part of this today's program. Today we are very fortunate and really privileged to have a great personality, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate who has inaugurated the Nobel Laureate Lecture Series, Professor Muhammad Yunus. In his discourse, he has very prominently and comprehensively said, the present society is such that what we Read is not what we say, and what we speak is not what we do. We need to do the things which we speak in our life, and what we see is to be implemented in our true life. He has very comprehensively dealt with management, economics, science, social science, human values, human rights, and so on and so forth. Probably Professor Muhammad Yunus, a great scholar who has very comprehensively dealt every aspect of human life and ultimately how human life should be. Sir, we are grateful and we are fortunate to have you today, especially in this centenary celebration, inauguration, lectures on behalf of the University of Mysore and on behalf of all of us I extend my artful thanks to you today we have with us Lamia Moshat executive director UNES Center Dhaka who has also come over here and really given impetus to this lecture series program as a part of the centenary celebration. On behalf of the University of Mysore and all of us, I extend my heartful thanks to Lamia Marshat. Today we have our uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor who has been striving hard to conduct a series of programs as, as an integral part of centenary celebration and today is one such event in which it has created an impetus and inspiration to all of us and he is the source for all of us to conduct such a series of programs. I take this opportunity to extend my artful thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor also. Today we have uh, with us Many legal luminaries, statements, scientists, former vice chancellors, students, heads of the departments, members of syndicate and members of academic council, and invitees and principals. I take this opportunity to extend 
a heartful thanks to all of you for having cooperated with us and to make this success program i also thank all the invitees who have responded to our request and really become the part of this uh, a very important program of the centenary celebration i take this opportunity to extend my heartful thanks to them also and i also extend my thanks to all the members of media who have been cooperating with us the university of mysore in conducting series of academic programs as a centenary part i extend my heartful thanks to all the media persons and all those who have directly and indirectly helped and supported and encouraged our university to conduct this kind of programs and to have a grandeur to this centenary celebration thank you so much i request the members of the audience to keep standing till the honor guest leaves the hall i'll make the announcement